Hi, fellow investors. In my last class, I talked about the first most important thing for Warren Buffett when he was looking for the wonderful companies. It is the economic moat. And today, I want to talk about the second most important thing for Warren Buffett, which is the asset-led business and high return on invested capital. So, what is an asset-led business? An asset-led business means a company does not need lots of tangible assets, such as buildings, machines, warehouses, cars, equipment, anything like that. So it doesn't need a lot of them. Or、oh, it needs maybe a computer, a few computers, or very light equipment that doesn't have to be heavily invested. If we look at the early investments of Warren Buffett, Geico Insurance, it's an insurance company. It doesn't need equipment. It only needs office and some computers. And Coca Cola, it may need some equipment, but it's not heavy equipment. The equipment doesn't have to be reinvested all the time. And American Express, it's a credit card company, and it does not need equipment. Those are the Assets led business that Warren Buffett lacked. So, what are the advantages of investing in assets led business? Because it has low cap capital requirement, and usually you can generate very high return on your investments. And second, the expansion will be easier because it doesn't need lots of money, and、uh, the risk of expansion is also smaller. And third is the company usually does not have lots of debt because it does not require lots of capital investments, so it doesn't need lots of cash. It doesn't have to borrow. Have to borrow. So compare with a as a heavy company, if it want to expand, it usually it needs to borrow lots of money and build factories, and、uh, the cycle is usually much longer. The business can usually be very cyclical as well. Again, how do you know if a company is asset light or not? Of course, you need to analyze its business model.、And、you can also check out the return and invested capital of the company, and you can find out that on GrooveFox.com's thirty-year financials page. If we, for instance, here check out Microsoft. Return on invested capital. Again, we come to the thirty-year financial page of Microsoft, and here is the return on invested capital. You can see that the return on invested capital of Microsoft has been in the thirty percent range.、Uh, of course, it changed over over time. Now it has been stable for around twenty-five percent over quite a few years. And how high is it compared with others? And if we now look at、uh, GM, which we all know, it's a car insurance, a car maker, and it's a capital-heavy company. So compare with Microsoft's twenty-five percent and GM, the return on invested capital is single digits. It's very low single digits. Even in good years, it's below five percent, and it can go barely positive. So if a company invests a hundred dollars, it Can have very low return on its investments. Can maybe return on two or three dollars in good years, and barely have any return in bad years. So this is an example of very low return on invested capital. Now we look at another car company, Toyota Motors, which is supposed to be a well managed,、uh, the largest car maker in the world. And if you look at the return on invested capital, it's it's. It、looks better, slightly better than GM, but still it's slow single digits. And if you look at Tesla, well, of course it's also car maker and、uh, requires lots of capital.、Uh, and you can see that the return on invested capital was negative for many years because the company was losing money. Now it's barely positive. Now if we look at Moody's, which is a favorite company of Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett holds it for. Many many years he bought it. He never sold any shares, and if the return investment, and it's similar to Microsoft, it's in the level of 
thirties and twenties, because Moody Moody's is a asset less company. It doesn't need anything other than computers. And now, if we think another company,、uh, Google. And Google, the return on invest capital is also very high, in above twenties, because it does not need、uh, heavy investments in business expansion. And another example of mine, favorite example of mine, Multi, which is the Chinese liquor company I mentioned last time. The return on invest capital is extremely high. It's in the order of seventies, eighties. And fifties, even the lower ones is at thirty years, thirties.、Uh, of course, if you remember last time, I mentioned that the operating margin was also extremely high. It was mostly above sixty percent. So this is an example of asset light company as well. If we compare the examples I just given, GM, Toyota Motors versus Microsoft, Moody's, and Multi, you can see. Very clearly, there are two categories of companies. One is a light and high return invest capital. The other is as a heavy and low return invest capital. What about the distribution of return on invested capital of all the companies? And I did the statistics. I divide all the companies that are traded in different markets: NYSE, Nasdaq, and in Chinese stock market and Hong Kong stock market. I divide each market into ten. Seg segments, and in each segment there are the same number of companies, but the return on invested capital is from the high to low. So the first group has is the top ten percent of the companies that have the highest return on invested capital. The second percentile is from the top ten、uh, from ten percent to twenty percent, and so on. So on average, if you look at this chart here, on average. The return on invested capital for all the companies is around five percent, three, four percent, and there. And U.S. companies usually have higher average return on invested capital. The companies that are traded in Hong Kong market has a lower average return on invested capital. But the first group, which has the highest invested return on invested capitals, the average can be around twenty percent for the first group. Ten percent of all the companies that are traded in those markets, and the the last group, the lowest one, can have negative return on invest capital. So they are very different. And now, if we look at the stock performance of those companies, you can see from this chart,、uh, the first line here is the U.S. companies, and we can see that the first group, which had the highest return on invest capital, also has the best. Return in stock market. This is the ten-year annualized average return for the first group of of companies. The average return for U.S. stocks, U.S. companies, above fifteen percent, and it's lower for companies that are traded in Chinese market or Hong Kong. But the overall trend is the same. The higher the return in U.S. capital is, the higher the stock re market return. The return is also. And if we go down, go to the average of the companies, which has average return on invested capital for U.S. market, the average return is about maybe six percent. But then for Chinese market, over the past ten years, the return is barely positive. And for stocks that are traded in Hong Kong market, it's even lower. Then if we look at the companies that had negative return on invested capital,、uh, they have been losing money. The stocks have been. Declining for the last ten years. Even if you bought them ten years ago, hold to today. It's a long-term holding. Your return will still be negative. Why? Because the company has been losing money, and the company has negative return invest capital. So from this, we can say that, of course, we want to invest in companies that have higher return invest capital. No matter where we go, in Chinese market, in U.S. market. And those will tend to give us higher stock market returns as well. No matter how much the valuation was, we we didn't even touch about the valuation ten years ago. So as long as the company has higher return invest capital, the stock market return tend to be higher. So now we 
look at Warren Buffett's investment again. We know that in early years he was invested heavily in asset-led companies, but in late years, these years he invested in railroad, in airlines. But why he changed? Because he has too much money now, and he couldn't find the investment he wants in the asset-led company companies. And he has, he just has too much money. And for small investors like us, we don't have the problem. He has, we don't have that much money. But the good thing with that is we have much broader choices among the asset-led companies, and we can find the investments we want. Usually, the smaller companies, which we would do nothing to Warren Buffett's portfolio, but it can do very well for us. That's、uh, the advantage of being a small investor. Hey, fellow investors! In this class, I talked about the second most important thing. For Warren Buffett, in looking for wonderful companies, it is the asset-led company, and、uh, with high return on invested capital. The first thing I talked about last time was the economic moat. In the next class, I will talk、uh, talk about the third important thing for Warren Buffett in looking for wonderful companies. Stay tuned with me, and、uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment area. I will get back to you. See you next time.